evening, everybody. This is your host, Huge Pop, from the Huge Pop Pressing Podcast. We have a guest from West Virginia tonight. He's a student at the Power Slam Academy. He has worked with the NICW and APW. He has wrestled um, as well in the New South Wrestling, Upstart Wrestling, Mega Pro Wrestling, IWA East Coast, and TWA Top Notch Wrestling Alliance. He also is a four-time APW Tag Team Champion, one-time APW Television Champion, he is the 2024 Mega Pro Wrestling Claim to Fame tournament winner. His catchphrase and his claim to fame is he's the absolute best. Please welcome to the show, to the Huge Pop Wrestling Podcast, our guest, Chase Bennett. How are you doing tonight, my guy? Ah, uh, man, I'm living the dream, man. I'm excited to talk to you. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, before I go any further, the, uh, questions about you. Um, the wrestling world lost. Um, another legend, um, Kevin Sullivan. I remember watching him as a kid in WCW. Um, I think it was WCW. Um, it was, man, what a loss we have today. Um, so Kevin Sullivan, rest in peace. Family members, you know, we're praying for you. So wanted to get off that, do that. And um, now we're going to talk Chase Bennett. Yes, sir. So, the, one the one and only, the absolute best. Chase Bennett. So, when you were a kid, were you the wrestling? Was that a, a thing of your that you watched all the time, or is it something you just gravitated away from? So, I'm I'm very fortunate that um, growing up, my parents like late at night. I remember it was WCW Nitro. It was Monday Night, you know, Raw. Um, so very much, yeah, I definitely grew up watching it. As I got older, I kind of drifted away, but as time went on, I kind of fell back in love with it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. I remember something, like, I think it might have been 99. I was sitting in my mom, or no, it's my grandparents' living room. This tells you how old I am. They had, like, the old school floor model TV, watching, like, the explosion as, like, WCW was coming on. So it's definitely a cool, nostalgic feeling just thinking about that right now. Absolutely. So did you watch Saturday Night's Main Event back in the day? Um, so for the most part, I want to say yes. Once again, 99, I was probably like three or four. But yeah. I, I'd imagine if it was anything wrestling related, I gravitated towards it for whatever reason. I think it was more so the bigger than life characters and things like that of the, the 90s. So WCW guy, you mentioned that. So here's a trick question I asked everybody: Who is the greatest WCW champion of all time? Oh, I feel like that's a subjective question. Um, I guess as far as the company goes, um, you know what? I'm gonna go with my heart here and my personal opinion. Um. It's one or two people. It's as much as I don't like love him, Ric Flair, boo that guy. Um, but also part of me also wants to say Sting. He was the franchise for a reason. So if I tell you if I, my answer is David Arquette, was that? Cut the cameras. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, no, I, I do not think David Arquette is the best champion ever. I There's a joke. It's a TikTok joke, and I just have to put it in there, so. Uh, do you acknowledge the tribal chief, man? I think we kind of have to. If you look at his resume and his body of work and what he's done for the sport of professional wrestling, yeah. He he moves the needle. You have to admit it. Yeah. We were talking about this uh, a couple days ago um, that uh, I don't remember anything that Cody Rhodes did in that match at SummerSlam. But what we do remember is the moments that where Roman Reigns came down and then stole the show, in my opinion. But it was good to see him back. So other than that, watching as a kid growing up, was there a match that you've seen that we were like, oh, shoot, that's why I'm getting into wrestling? Um, so if there was a match, I would probably say – it was, if I was just the pinpoint one, and I watched it a little bit later on, it was 
Brian Danielson versus Nigel McGinnis. Yeah, that's good. I mean, you got two great guys in that ring. I mean, Brian Danielson is probably one of the best technical wrestlers around. So this guy, I mean, he's interrupting your podcast. I'm sorry, Chase. This guy's interrupting you. He's from a promotion that I'm dealing with. Well, it wouldn't shock me since Scott is a bum. Let's, I'm going to let my guests figure that out, if I'm a bum or not. But thank you, Brady Brown. Uh, when did you When did you decide? Um, how old were you? What year was it? When did you decide you wanted to be a pro wrestler? Um, so fun fact, I started actually amateur wrestling simply because eventually at some point I wanted to get into professional wrestling. Um, so it was a couple months before COVID, the huh? dreaded C word, um, I had got in and I remember when I was a little boy, I, I, I don't want to say little, I was probably, I was in middle school, so I was like 13 maybe, um, there was an independent promotion that used to run not too far from where I live and um, that's when I actually met the man that trained me and broke me into the business of professional wrestling. And that was Chance Prophet. I remember watching him thinking his face paint's cool. I like the way he looks. Um, a couple years down the road, I was probably, I want to say maybe 23, 24 years old. And I decided, you know what? I thought about it for like a month. I was like, do I really want to do this? And then I consulted with the, uh, the uh, the wife, and she was like, yeah, I support you on whatever you do. And I ended up sending in my application, paid my trial fee, and I ended up two weeks later coming back and, and training and uh, breaking in. It was, it, was a, it was a weird time because COVID hit right thereafter, so we couldn't necessarily train in person. We did everything through, like, Zoom meetings. So that's when I really started to learn how to build a character and uh, develop, I guess, would be the word. So explain to the fans, because I think a lot of fans think you guys just go into a gym and, tra and do reps and come in, and they're glorified people that get paid all this money in the indies. And you mentioned you had to pay your, your, your fee. So it costs to get into training school, am I correct? Absolutely. It's like anything else you would do, right? Um, you know, if you look at any professional sport at some point, they had to pay, right? Whether if it's like football, Little League, you had to pay. Pop Warner, you had to uh, pay for all those different sports. At some point, you're paying dues. And unfortunately, the reality is you're never going to be done, especially in the world of professional wrestling, you're never going to be done paying dues. Paying dues is a big thing. because Paying dues just doesn't talk about paying out money. It talks about setting up the ring, tearing down the ring, helping set the chairs up. Cleaning up after the event, am I right? Absolutely. Like the entire first year that I uh, I broke in, it was very much showing up before the show started, and this was even before I ever got an opportunity to step foot as a wrestler into the ring. I was coming in, just setting up, doing anything I could to get somebody to say, "Hey, this kid's doing it the right way." He's paying dues. He's listening. And it's it's a lost art, but it's definitely one that if you do partake in, you will never regret the, the stories and the lessons learned, whether it be, you know, the easy way or the hard way. Either way, you got to learn. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, you take your bag wherever you go, I'm sure, right? Oh, yeah. always. Always have a ref shirt in it. Always have your gear ready. Because you never know when your name's going to get called. There you go. There you go. I just wanted you to um, briefly talk about that because I think a lot of people misunderstand what you indie guys really do. And I appreciate you sharing that. So if I had to ask you a question, who was the greatest influence or impact on your wrestling career? Who would that be? <sighs> greatest influence or impact? I would have to say one Joe Brody. All right. Um, do you remember your first match going through that curtain, what it felt like, what the outcome was? Can you explain that day? Whew. Um, so 
when you say first match, let's let's get a little granular with it. Like my first time stepping in front of a live audience because my first match was actually a battle royal. Okay. And it was actually in one of the bigger venues. So um, I, I'll never forget. It was like two weeks before show day. And there was a cancellation due to them testing positive for COVID. And I had my card pulled. Well, it was pouring the rain in the middle of a baseball field. And I'll never forget that when I had came out, just I had like family there supporting me. And I the fact that I got a reaction, like my adrenaline was pumping. There was bodies flying over the top rope. And I was like, this is the best job you could ever ask for. I could not imagine wanting to do anything else. How hard was the training and the, all the bumps? And... Um, it's definitely so. My opinion has changed over the years. Right. Um, it's it's not easy. It's not for the faint of heart. Um, you know, it's it's like anything, right? Any professional sport. Right. It's not a matter of if. It's just a matter of when. You train and condition your body to be able to take these bumps, but you have a bump card for a reason and uh, use it sparingly and, and be smart and be methodical in your approach. Okay. Now, do you have any advice for upcoming wrestlers, upcoming newbies in the business uh, that you can share with them? So if, if you're wanting to get into the world of professional wrestling first, do your research, find a reputable school, um, get a gym membership because it's a part of paying dues. You have to, one, look the part, but you also have to perform at a high level, especially if you want to make a living doing this. Um, and when you get booked, find find a veteran. You know, don't, if they're on the phone, let them let them have their conversation. Shake hands with everybody you meet. Be courteous. Clean up after yourself. Be respectful, and uh, just always try to listen. Always learn because in this sport, there's nobody that knows everything. Awesome. So, um, character and persona. So, where did Chase Bennett come up with his gimmick and his the absolute best? How'd this all evolve? <sighs> Whew, that's a loaded question. So growing up playing sports, right? Um, I was very fortunate. I was able to compete at an extremely high national level, um, state level, got to travel a lot. Um, a lot of getting the opportunity to compete at the collegiate level was really rough for me because a lot of people would tell me, you know, you're, you're a little undersized. Um, so very much, I remember when I first started within the first week of training for professional wrestling, I was told, what is special about you? Why should I pay to see you? So if I could just sum it up, it was, I am not going to be denied my greatness by anyone. And that it's just rugged determination. It's lion-hearted, you know? It doesn't matter who's standing in front of me. I believe in myself. I know at the end of the day, I put the work in and that I am, pun intended, the absolute best. Absolute best. Even though you vote, even though you root for the absolute worst college football team, you still claim the fame that you are the absolute best. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Certifiably, undeniably. I'm just asking because. You mentioned earlier off camera that you're an Ohio State fan. Do not, people that are watching don't hold that against them. I don't hold against them. I I feel sorry for Chase Bennett for being an Ohio State fan. The back there, go blue, hundred percent, man. So the opportunity was there, Chase. I had to take that. Mm. So, <laughs> what rest? Is there any influence, like any um, specific wrestlers in the business that you? Uh, gravitate towards and learn and watch their videos and um, model your uh, craft after? Um, yeah, definitely. So, you know, stylistically, right. You look at people from across 
the globe. It, I can't set and pinpoint one thing. I've been fortunate enough that I've had a bunch of really good mentors. Um, as far as character work, the guy that trained me, Chance Prophet, best character work I've seen. Most innovative, once again, another guy that helped train me, Jason the Gift Kincaid, and his innovative ways um, helped me. I always loved the technical wrestling, so Angle, Benoit, Malenko, Danielson, Zack Sabre Jr., those guys I gravitated towards because they were just so technical. And Bret Hart. And Bret Hart. Can't forget him. Um, but even, like, as I got older, I started to, like, get into the Japanese style. So Kenta, Kenta Kabashi, Stan Hansen, all those guys that, that brought legitimacy to the sport, I absolutely loved and adored. So um, is there a close friend in the business? I get it. I, I probably could tell. I'm guessing that you're probably your trainer. Um, and so, yeah. So are you asking me, do I have any close friends in the business? Yeah. Well, who's your closest friend in the business? Uh, do you stay in touch with them all, at all? I've been fortunate that I've got to meet a lot of phenomenal human beings through the sport of pro wrestling. Um Probably the salt of the earth human being that I've met is Chance Prophet, the guy that trained me. He he never lied to me. He always was straightforward with me. Um, one of the guys that I've been able to tag with and won championships with, um, Bobby Yellow, Yellow Man, um, another great, great guy trained by the Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant. Love Bobby. Uh, Scott Storm. Love him. He was a really he's he's a very, very close friend. We all stay I stay in touch with all of them. The only one I really haven't talked to within maybe the last month or so is probably the guy that trains me. I should probably uh, be a better wrestling son and, and reach out to him, and that would be with chance. Okay. Now the promotions, there's many promotions that you um, wrestle with. And I'm sure just like every any promotion they bring in the um the legends or whoever. Um, I, I have a promotion down here in Panama City that brings in Chase Stevens is coming in this um, in two weeks. When those guys come in, how important it is is it for you guys, or even you being a legend in the business, how important it is for you guys to pay attention to what they say about your match? Or is that just something you guys don't like to do? Um, I can't speak for everybody, but I, I can speak for myself. Um, I try to always be courteous because, you know, those guys, they're on a strict schedule. Um, I've been very fortunate that the ones that have been able to pull me aside and say, hey, you did this really well, or, you know, let's work on this and tighten this up. I've always taken it. It's constructive criticism, and I learn from it, you know. Uh, I've, I've been very fortunate to be booked on quite a few shows with some good names. Um, probably the one that comes – to mind the most is Ricky Morton. Uh, he he actually got to watch me win my second world tag team title, okay. and uh, he actually came out after the match and congratulated us. So that was that was a pretty big deal for me. You know, Ricky being you know who who he was and who he is, having his stamp of approval was just really the icing on the cake for that night. That makes sense, man. He's a he's a legend for sure. So. Are there any guys you've faced that you really don't care to face ever again? Um, I can't say I can't say yes. There are a couple guys that I will say at the end of the night the match didn't go my way, and uh, if I get the opportunity again, fate won't repeat itself. Who are these guys? Um, so I got to wrestle Jason Kincaid in a barn burner of a 30 minute match. And uh, maybe my temper got the best of me and uh, he ended up getting the win, but he is somebody that I absolutely love to wrestle again. Um, bam, bam, Lance Erickson. He's somebody that every time that I've gotten in the ring with him, I've, I've learned just by watching him and getting better because I watched him and worked with him. Uh, he is one of the best 
for a very, very, very big reason. Not challenges thrown off those guys or um well Lance Erickson's hurt, but uh Kincaid, you know I want my rematch. So yeah. never I say never say I, I can't you say you get you got the anger got the best of you, man. Are you is there anger issues that go on, man? I, it, it's what? No, it's just <laughs> it's it's very much student versus teacher. And you always kind of want to, one, you know, if you you beat them, you get that notch in the belt. But it's also, for me, a symbol of just showing, hey, I, I've improved. You know, those guys are, especially Kincaid, world class in every sense of the reason. And it's a shame that he's not signed to somewhere like major right now because just how good he is and his wrestling mind is brilliant. Um, with him, it is very much a technical chess match, but it's like unorthodox in the way that he thinks. He's very, I'm trying to think of the word, unorthodox definitely, but effective nonetheless. So is there a favorite match <laughs> or a most memorable experience or match that you've had in your career? Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, it would probably have to be, um, it was the Young Lions, Chase Bennett, Bobby Yella versus Pure Temptation. Uh, any of our matches have always been really good and came to the limit, but our most recent one was, uh, let's see, Bridge Brew Works. It was just, I think, last month, maybe. And uh, let's just say they got caught with their pants down. All right. All right. I just have it in my notes. Pure Temptation, is a, you have a feud going on with them. Uh, so if um, they were caught with their pants down, I guess that's why there's a feud going on. So talk to me about Cuban Assassin. Oh, God. That, that. Whew. You know, I can't stand him. For who he is and what he stands for, but um, I'm very fortunate that I've been able to grace the ring with him. Uh, he cheats a lot, by the way. Um, but actually, my first championship I ever won was when I beat him for the APW World Television Championship. So that was a pretty cool, memorable experience. So he cheats a lot. How is your game cheating? If you got a cheating game, are you a heel or a face? Oh, oh. Uh, I'm uh I'm Clark Kent. I don't I don't I don't like I don't like Queen. I'm I'm Chase Bennett. Um but no, nah, I don't need to cheat the win. You know, I play by the rules or well within the confines of the rules. What do you consider your um I'm sorry, no wait. Uh, four-time APW Tag Team Champion, one-time APW Television Champion, and a 2024 Mega Pro Wrestling Claim to Fame Tournament winner. All those, all those career highlights that I just named. Is there a, is there one that stands out as your most favorite highlight, championship-wise? Um. So definitely, um. It's hard to put like put my finger on like this is the one, but the claim to fame tournament. I actually had faced guys that I have wrestled before and shared the ring with. Um, it was a night where I wrestled three back to back matches. Well, not back to back, same night, and uh, it was just really a test of. Well, let's see if we can test the young lion and see if he can hang it by the end of the night. You know, um, I like to think I proved that. You know, I mean, I can look at that list of people I faced in the opening round. Sean Cruz. Yeah. And the, the, you know, the motto was Cruz can't lose. Um, you know, we took it to the limit. Round two, I find myself, or semis, Right. I found myself against a formidable foe, a familiar foe in the Cuban assassin, right? And he, he, 
he, for the most part, got the best of me. And then I found myself in a rematch against the gentleman who actually gave me my first singles loss in Zayden Kane, who is absolutely amazing. And even got jumped beforehand by him, but still was able to pull it out. Um, just having that moment where I can, you know, definitively lift up the trophy and and at the end of the night know that no matter rain, sleet, or snow, Chase Bennett's going to shine regardless meant the world to me, especially in front of that crowd. You know, Mega Pro Wrestling is the first company that gave me my first singles booking, and uh, they put a lot of equity in me, and I paid a lot of dues. What's up, Rick? So you're talking. You mentioned Sean Cruz. Are you talking Sean Cruz of the industry? Yes. Great guy, right? Um, go ahead, go ahead. I got. I bought his T-shirt, man. I mean, I, then I got told what the T-shirt was about, and I'm like, okay, I don't know if I want to wear the T-shirt, but that's that's go what go check out his T-shirt. You'll find out what I'm talking about. But Sean Cruz is he the man, or is he? A stepping stone in your in your uh, in your way of uh, what you want to accomplish. Um, give me one second. Um, so Sean Cruz, let's see. He is somebody that I, I respect and admire. Hard worker. Um, at least at first. Now he's kind of. I don't, I don't know. He's kind of went down a rabbit hole of darkness. And uh, I just I can't agree with his, his, his tactics and just what he's doing. I think he doesn't need to do all those things. I thought he was an amazing wrestler beforehand. Now I may not look at him in so bright of a light, if that makes sense. Yeah, so you're saying he does a lot of cheating or does a lot of dirty play in the ring that you think he shouldn't have to do. Oh yeah, absolutely. Would you ever challenge? Oh, do you ever go one on one with him for a title if it needs to, if it need to be? Yeah, actually, I want to say this was probably two months ago. I faced him for the uh, the Amer the APW Television Title, and yeah. uh, it was just one of those things where I kind of came up short. You know, shook hands at the end. You know, I'm never afraid to admit when the better man wins, but. Uh, I don't think Sean Cruz is the same same man he was two months ago. Okay. So do you have any funny backstage rib stories you could share with us or any car ride stories you can share with us? <sighs> yeah. Uh, um, let's see. Because uh, I don't, I don't want to name drop anybody. Um, so... <sighs> We have uh, in the APW locker room, we have a most legendary blooper reel that is updated in the group chat almost weekly. And it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good. Um, let's see. Worst rib? Uh, not, not that, I, well, unless they're happening to me. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, let's see. Uh, Joe Brody constantly tells me, uh, I got chicken legs, but I'm a 600 pound back squatter, and I think I have the biggest legs on the roster. So I mean, I don't know. I guess I mean I don't know. It's tough. It depends. You know, the boys will be boys. All right. You traveled via car, right? Oh uh, yeah. So uh, it's mainly just road stories of like other people. Um, it's usually just. Talking, talking the uh, the world of professional wrestling, you know, insider stuff. Okay, all right, that's fair. That's fair. So, fans, um, how do you connect with fans in um, in your wrestling career, and how important are fans and the merch and everything else to you? So, I see that in the background. That's not connecting with a fan very well. That's oh, <laughs> yeah. So. The best team in the nation. Now, um, so for me, with the fans are everything, right? Um, for a lot of them, I and even growing up myself, this is the way I felt like I kind of connected and understood was 
you don't know what they're going through. Um, so with that, you know, that them coming to a wrestling show, them paying to see you, you know, might be their escape for the day. You don't know what they have going on. So if for that hour or however long I'm out there, I want to distract them from whatever they have going on. Um, I'm very fortunate that people like me um, and, be, you know, they, they get behind me. And for that, I have the utmost love and respect and adulation for them. I'll, I'll never turn away, you know, giving an autograph or taking a picture with somebody. Um, just because at the end of the day, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be doing this. And I probably wouldn't be having as much fun because when I broke in, COVID was a thing. And I remember seeing just computer screens with faces on it on national television. And I'm like... This is not the wrestling I know. Right, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. So we talked earlier about paying your dues and stuff like that. I have a question that connects to that about brotherhood. How important to you and to the guys in the locker room, how important is brotherhood to you guys on the indie scene? It's everything, you know. Um, I was brought in and taught you're only as good as the person you're working with. Um, and at the end of the night, it is a fraternity of brothers and sisters and another, we all had the exact same love for the sport of professional wrestling. And, uh, it's just, you bond, you know, you're on the road so much, you battle injury, injuries, you battle, you know, you know, just the idea of like maybe something didn't go your way. You 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 form these close bonds on the road with with friends that almost feel like it it's just that it's a brotherhood, you know. You love each other, but you gotta do business. You gotta do business, yeah. So I um I have a group of questions came coming from my foster kids. They like to ask Mr. Scott what he does at night, and I tell him and they say, Okay, we ask some questions. So let's I just um, consolidated a big uh, list of simple questions. Okay. Favorite food? Oh, that's tough. Um, I feel like pizza, you can't go wrong with pizza. Do you put pineapple on that pizza? Yes, but it depends on what it's going with. Okay. You have a favorite book? Um, favorite book? Uh, yeah, matter of fact, that I could probably go grab it. It's actually by Dr. Tom Pritchard. Okay. You have a favorite TV show? <sighs> There's probably a few. Um, I love The Boys. Okay. Um, I love The Mandalorian, although it's that's kind of like a controversial show to watch, just given the story. Yeah. Favorite movie? Favorite movie. Um, oh man, I'm trying to think of it right off. I want to say probably. Let me see. Oh, man, that is such a tough question. There's so many good ones. Um, so huge fan of Wolf of Wall Street. Um Favorite Christmas movie of all time, uh, Die Hard. Um, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Catch Me If You Can. That was a really good one. Yeah. Um, if You Have the Time, The Green Mile, super emotionally investing. Uh, pain and Gains. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, favorite movie. Um. Yeah, those are probably the ones that are coming to the top of my head. I'm drawing right. a blank. Throw me favorite the Iggy. Hobby. Favorite hobby? Favorite hobby? Outside of professional wrestling, um, working out and being the world's greatest dad and husband. There you go. I don't want to even ask this question because I already know it, but I have to because my kids want to know. Favorite sports team? Plug me ears. Professional or college? 
All the way around. What's your favorite sports team? The Ohio State Buckeyes. And then if we're going to go to, like, professional, the Dallas Cowboys. We cannot go further on this. I'm a Detroit Lions fan. I'm a Michigan Wolverines fan. And you all cheated to beat my Lions last year. So I'm just going to put that out there. But we took care of your Ohio State, Ohio State football team, so we're good. One and one. It's a sensitive topic the past couple of years. <laughs> yeah, Jerry Jones, huh? Um, what's your Mount Rushmore of wrestlers? Oh, uh, man, once again, that is a such a hard argument, or like, because I feel like there's, it's subjective, one, right? Like, what do you like as far as, like, stylistically, right? If I was to go Mount Rushmore, um, see, see, he gets it, he gets it. Unfortunately, we also, he probably gets that we're going to be out of playoffs, too, by round one. <laughs> he gets it. <laughs> So, Mount Rushmore, you have to put Ric Flair because his body of work, what he's done. There's nobody that man can't wrestle and make him look good. Ricky Morton, if you think about emotional attachment, nobody connected more than Ricky Morton. Um, I have to put, this one's interchangeable, Danielson, Bret Hart. Technically, there's no two better. Um, then you'd have to put Austin, right? He was the anti-hero, right? If you think about it in that way, like who didn't relate to him? Everybody's had a boss they wanted to beat up at one point or another. Talk to you, Joe Brody. Um, <laughs> and then Bob, you would have to put The Rock just because his character, he had that, that, uh, that aura, I guess, is what the young cats, the young Thundercats say these days. So that would be my five. I'm probably going to go back later and be like, I should have said X, Y, or Z. You mentioned The Rock. Do you like The Rock that we've seen uh, prior to WrestleMania? That so intense, fired up Rock that I love some. I love that. That was one of, oh, one yeah. of the, That was amazing stuff. That was money. That was lightning in a bottle. That is... You know, every time he comes back, you know, I watch it with like a grain of salt. I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready to accept that this might be the last time I get to see him like this. Yeah, yeah. By far phenomenal. So, of course, when I reached out to you, you said, yes, I started doing my research. And I reached out to people that you know. Um, and I have some good stuff and I, uh, some kind of questions that they want to hear, too. So this part, the last I'm gonna, we're going to talk about your promotions you um, work with. Plus, people have some things to say. Um, I reached out to Brandon Saxton. Okay. Um, he said, that's my cousin. The man tra trains his heart out. I feel like you have your hands full. He feels like he has your hands full. He's been a good wrestler since high school and middle school. He has a heart of gold, all-around wonderful person to be around, kind, co courageous, very intelligent people. Love to be around him. I believe in my heart, Chase will always be a champion. I would love to see him in WWE one day. So you made an impression on somebody. So um, I want to share those words with you. Um, I also chatted with your wife, Brianna Marie Bennett. Probably the best fact I have is that he has always been very passionate about sports, whether that's football or his current love for wrestling? And then this question she asked, how does it feel to be supported by your wife and family? Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the world to me. Um, you know, I couldn't ask for a better spouse. I couldn't ask for a better family. Um, there was times in, I think everybody who has done this for a living um, can attest to this. There's times where there's self-doubt, but those people, you know, your support system's everything. You know, there was times where I was like, I don't know if I'm ever going to make it. And there's still those things, but because you have that support system in, in line, it makes the decision to keep going and push further and further 
worth it so much and it's 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 the world man it's the coolest feeling in the world yeah absolutely 100 percent agree man i can say i have a, a wife that's just as supportive as you um your wife is with my with me um october my mom passed away um and i wanted to drop everything i wanted to say screw it i you know and then i was reminded that my mom was one of my biggest supporters and my mom said, the last thing she said ever said to me is, do not ever stop doing what you're doing. My wife reminds me of that every all the time because there's been, you know, we like I said, we go through summer. No kids are in school. They're always here. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And I, I, I told, I, to be honest with you, I wanted to give this up probably three or four times this summer. But I have a great wife, like, like you just said, yours is, that keeps on pushing, 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 tells you to, to achieve your goals. So I understand where you're at, man. So I applaud your wife. Um, I don't know if you'll hear that, but that's a wonderful, wonderful thing as a man to have someone like that to support you. So I, I my heart goes out to your wife and um, all that stuff. So that's pretty cool. So uh, we, we are going to talk about your promotions. Uh, Rick Del Santos says APW is my favorite current wrestling program. Rick and I are, buddy, are good friends in the podcast era region. Um, and so... Watch it every week on uh, here in Connecticut. Joe Brody puts a on a good program. Um, first of all, where can you find APW? What what uh, like Roku channel does has APW on it? How do I watch APW? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. There is a bunch of different um, TV channels you can watch it on. Probably the most easily accessible would probably be Rumble. Literally. Download the app. You have it on your phone. You can have it on your laptop. You can have it on your TV, depending on what type of TV you have. Um, I think it's Fox 59, and there's like a plethora of different channels that, uh, at least locally around other states, so like Virginia, New York, West Virginia. Um, we're trying to expand and go global with that, as far as I'm understanding. Okay. Okay. And what about Joe Brody? Do you have the same feeling about Joe Brody as Rick does? He puts on a great promotion or a great show or, or is there beef? I heard his name a couple times and it seemed like to me there's some friction going on between you and Mr. Mr. Brody. No, no. So well, you it's, be honest, man. I mean, I get it. it well, it's, it's the boss at the end of the night, but no, I have the utmost love and respect for Joe Brody. Um, I was very fortunate that one day he actually met him uh, at a mega show and he pulled me to the side and introduced himself to me. Um, he said, I think you have a great look, great attitude, and I just want to help you grow as a professional wrestler and do this the right way. And I don't know if at the end of the day I will be in this major promotion or this one. But I will always say thank you to the people that helped me and wanted to put that equity and that investment in me. Joe Brody did just that. He gave a snot-nosed kid um, who didn't know if he was ever going to do anything in this business a chance and let me run with it. He's been my best friend and also my biggest critic at times. But, I mean, you know, those are the prices you have to pay. It's a learning curve, you know, and. I'm fortunate that I have him in American Pro Wrestling backing me. Um, he is a plethora of wrestling knowledge, and he has the world's most extensive collection of wrestling. If there's anything that I can say, like, hey, Joe, can you send me some tape to watch? He sent me Rick Martell. He sent me so many different, you know, uh, just videos of, like, hey, watch this match. Watch this. Do you know who this is? You need to study this. Watch this. He's he's helped me more than I can ever repay him for, and he's probably forgot more about the world of professional wrestling than I will ever know. Sounds like a brain. Sounds like a very intelligent man in the business. So, um, can you talk to us about your current tag team title run in American pro wrestling? Oh, that's bittersweet. So, uh. What I can say is the Young Lions, Chase Bennett, Bobby Yella. Um, ironically, he was also the person I lost the APW tag or the APW television title to. Um, in a 
unfavorable way. He cheated. Okay, it is what it is. He cheated. He knows he cheated. We've talked about this. We've reconciled. Um, we've been fortunate enough that, you know, he, here, here's the thing about Bobby Yellow, right? He's a bad guy trying to do good. I'm just a good guy. Um, so I'm fortunate enough that we've, you know, we've ran with it. Um, there was nights where he was hurt and we just picked up. There was nights where I was hurt and he picked up. He is my best friend. He is a mentor and he's always been a confidant. If I didn't have something or if I had like a negative feeling about something, I could talk to him and he'd be like, it's okay, Chase Bennett. You can win it. We the young lions. He said, we come here to do three things. That's wild on them, style on them, and shake the room. And we do it every Thursday. So I have to say that Bobby has been an amazing friend, an amazing partner, and I'm just overall grateful for Bobby Yellow. Nice, nice. So how did you become a how did you become to wrestle in APW? And what are your goals as far as a, as that goes for a wrestler in APW? So as far as APW goes, yeah. Um, once again, it was one of those things. Joe Brody pulled me to the side and said, hey, I want to help you. Uh, I have a promotion. And he said, you're a young talent that I think has, you know, the stars, the limit as far as potential goes. And uh, he was like, I want to work with you and I I'd love to book you. Um, as far as APW goes, we are a brother promotion to NICW. Um, I don't think it's outside of the realm. Matter of fact, I've, I've, I've come this close. I made it to the semifinals in the American title tournament. And I come up short to Lance Erickson, the eventual, uh, APW or the American title tournament winner, the longest reigning APW heavyweight or American heavyweight champion. I don't think it's outside of the realm to say that within the next calendar year, Chase Bennett could be APW American heavyweight champion. There you go. That's a, I love that. I love that. I love the confidence. So which wrestlers in the indie scene have you, have, have you had the greatest matches with? And who have you? Who haven't you wrestled that you want to wrestle in the Indies before your career is over? Ah, uh, that's that's a really tough thing to answer. Um, I'll say one match that I haven't had yet that I'm I'm eagerly waiting for is uh, I would love to wrestle the the man that trained me in Chance Prophet um, easily. Just to, you know, once again, student versus teacher. I want to show them the young lions ready to step up. Um, I won my rematch with Kincaid. I would love to work and wrestle with uh, Victor Andrews. If you've ever seen him work, he is he's head and shoulders above a lot of really good guys. Um, and then if I had one dream opponent, and I know my time's running out to get this, I want to wrestle Brian Danielson, and I want to test just how good Chase Bennett is against the best in the world. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you think about the current wrestling scene in West Virginia? Where is it going? What's your feelings on it? <sighs> um, it's in a better place. I think it's getting better. Um. I think it's starting to really thrive. I know COVID, a lot of places shut down and um, a lot of them didn't get a chance to open back up. Um, I think the, the talent that the state is starting to produce is high quality. Like you have to look at it. You have the, you know, the Troy Parkers, the Nurse Micahs of the world, people that are getting an opportunity in CZW or OVW, Nick Hamrick, a guy that, once again, I don't necessarily have the most love for, but you have to give credit where credit's due. Um, they're high level. They're next level. And I think it's just a matter of time before one of them actually gets signed to somewhere big. So Top Notch Wrestling Alliance says, we love having him there and his great asset for, for us. He is 
His in-ring abilities are great. His attitude backstage is amazing. I look for this young man to make a big wave in the circuit. So we got, got praise after praise. So I know you're doing something right. So I hope you know that you're doing something right. Uh, Yellow Man wants to know, ask him what it's like um, teaming with him. What's it like teaming with Yellow Man? What's it like teaming with Yellow Man? Oh, that's tough. He said, I never know what I'm going to get. But I do know, I do know, once again, uh, it's, it's, it's very much play by Phil. Uh, it's, it's Bobby Yella. I love him to pieces. Uh, uh, it just it depends. He, we kind of just, like, look at each other, shrug, and, like, we're going to do whatever we're going to do, but we're going to do three things. And it's just this – it's – oh, man, I'm trying to really – quantify it in a way that makes sense. Bobby is just definitely a salt of the earth human being. He's he's what it means to be the pinnacle of a really good best friend. Um we we tear down the house. I can tell you right now since we've tagged tagged together, we haven't had a bad match. The building's shaking, the ground's quaking, but it's always lit. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So Ben, we've been on here for fifty for over fifty one minutes, and um, what does Chase Bennett have to say to fans, to up and coming opponents, and to the wrestling community all around? To up and coming opponents, when you're good. You tell people you're good. When you're great, people tell you you're great. But when you're the absolute best, they don't just call you the absolute best. They just call you Chase Bennett. What about for your fans? What do you call your fans? Where can they see you? Where can they find you? What social media? Where can you get your t-shirts? So you can find me at, as far as merch goes, pwts.com or at the merch table, um, as far as where you can find me on socials, uh, the un, on Instagram, the underscore Chase underscore Bennett. Um, as far as Facebook, Chase Bennett. As far as what is it? X. Sorry, we changed the name around here. The underscore Chase underscore Bennett. Um, and then uh, let's see where else you can catch me on Rumble. NICW, APW, where wrestling is revered, where honor is intact, and wrestling is wrestling. One last question, Mr. Bennett. Okay. Who is the, what legend in the business have you, has, has made the most, that you've met, like in person, you've met, has made the most impression on your career? Oh, that's tough. Um, I want to say, I want to say Ricky Morton, definitely Ricky, just watching, going back, right, because he was from a different time. I grew up in the, the 90s and early 2000s to go back and, and just watch him wrestle and the emotion he got and the investment he got. It, it speaks volumes to just how hard he worked. Um, and just having his seal of approval was was more than than anything, right? Because when you think of Ricky, you think of he really is the pinnacle of the term God of tag team wrestling and the idea that every match he had was a banger. You were invested. You know, you, I, the only bad part I can really say about watching it is you you paid the full price for the seat, but you're only using the edge of it. Ricky was so good. So that would probably be the person. It would be Ricky Morton. So I lied to you. I have a couple more questions. What do you see the state of professional wrestling in the main stage? And where do you see the indie scene going as we get into the middle of 2024? So, oh, the state of the industry address. Is that what we're calling this? 
I'm asking for the absolute best feelings about where the industry is at today, both indie and wrestling. So I think it is the best um, form of pure entertainment. I think it's in a good place, and I think it's in the direction of going to a better place. But until I'm on top, it's not going to be at the absolute best place. There you go. So, huge pop wrestling podcast. You heard it from Chase Bennett. Um, he, he ran, ran it down. He ran it from the beginning to the end. Not the end because he's got more things he has to go and do. So, he claims he's the absolute best. I will say in professional wrestling, indie wrestling, I'm not going to say he is or he's not. His team that he roots for is not the absolute best. My team is. Huge Pop Wrestling fans, I appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Chase, man, I appreciate you sharing your stories. Um, and again, props off to your wife that to be in your support. I love the fact that I there's you know that we need that in this business. My wife says this the, the sport of wrestling is fake, but I uh, I don't I can ask you what you think about that. If we have time, do you have time to ask, answer that question? Absolutely. Is this the? My wife would say it's. I'm going to say this on a. It's a, not a PG show. My wife said, and I, I have a TikTok out there that that got over two thousand views. Wrestling is fake as fuck. <clears throat> so, what sport? Do you get knocked out in and you wake up and you continue pro wrestling, right? What sport are you trained and told, hey, you only have so many times to do this? And it's not a matter of if you're going to get hurt. It's a matter of when. Just pro wrestling. Um, we are essentially – you know, peeling back that curtain a little bit right here. I hate to do it. We are, and this is a quote, we are trained stuntmen with one take and no safety net. We are the best at what we do, and we are the most entertaining at what we do. Yeah, you heard it. You heard from the absolute best, Chase Bennett. That's what wrestling is, not fake. So huge pop wrestling fans, appreciate your time. Check us out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, keep Hit the follow button. Hit the like button. Go to Rumble and check out see more live Chase Bennett on APW. Um, for one, that I know that and all, this other, all the other ones as much as he's listed. Um, Chase, don't go nowhere. I'm going to play a closeout song, but I don't want you going anywhere. I want to talk to you afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate your time on the show. I appreciate you giving your um, heart to the show. And I thank you again. He's pop wrestling. You guys know what it is. It's for life.